Today we're going to take a look at this loading bar and how we built it with just four keyframes and we're also able to extract the information to get a percentage number. So let's dive in. Okay, so we're just going to start here by getting rid of all of this. Come up, we're going to pull a solid down. Now you can make this any length you want. When you just pull them down, they are automatically five seconds, as you can see here, five seconds. So we'll just make this into a compound clip. Jump right over into Fusion. And let's close that, make this a little easier. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull down a solid and we're gonna pull down a rectangle and connect them. And we're going to extend the width on this. And let's actually see this. So we're just gonna grab the background itself, bring it up into this window. So now we can see it up here. And this is where we're gonna next uh, determine how thick we want the loading bar to be. So we'll change the height. That seems fine. Uh, once we do that, we can take this first rectangle, we'll move it up. We'll just control C, control V, then we pasted it down here. And if we were to take this first rectangle and move it, what you'll notice is that now we have two bars. So we don't want that, so I'll just uh, go back. And what we want to do is in the second rectangle that we have here, we want to change this paint mode to multiply. So now it has to get multiplied with another um, rectangle for it to be a visible value. So if we were to come back in here into our first rectangle and move it, what you'll notice is only the overlap is the part that's visible there. So let's go back. So the idea here that we're going to do is we're just going to be moving it along the X axis here to get that loading bar effect okay um, so we're just going to have this rectangle and if we were to come into here we could move this right but then it might be a bit hard to uh, extract these values and produce them uh, for something else like I was talking about with the text because uh, you have a couple of different values in fusion you have a number value you have a point value and you have a text value. So the primary things between that's number and text is pretty self-explanatory. And then uh, point value that always has an X, Y. And if you're in um, 3D, it'll have a, um, a Z as well. So we need to separate those. So to do that, we're just going to click right here in center. We're gonna right click, modify with, and then come down here to XY path. And as you'll see, modifiers is now lit up. Now in modifiers, we have our X, Y, and Z obviously isn't used because it's just a 2D. Um, and now we can modify these individually, okay? But we need, we're need we gonna take it a step further than this. We're going to add in a um, another uh, location that we would be able to pull this from so it's even easier to extract that data. So what we're gonna do is in our background, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna right click, and then we're going to go to edit controls. And now this window's gonna pop up. This is where we're going to be able to add in a new control. As you can see, like I was saying before, the number point in text, we're just gonna keep it at number. And to make this easy, we're just going to uh, change this to NC, you know, just new control, and we'll make it NC one for new control one and then our input type all of these different types are all the different things you ever see in these controls so we'll just make it simple we'll just make it into a slider if you want to you can change the where the center position is and that we don't it's not that big of a deal for um, this particular tool so now we'll just go to okay what you'll see over here there's a new little icon that showed up right here and now we have that nc1 all right, so now we wanna map this NC1 control to this other control that we had over here. And we are gonna be working with the X and not the Y. So we're just gonna right click here, expression. And then in here, we're just going to state what this value needs to be. So uh, that was in the background one that we added that new tool. So we'll just do background one. And then we'll put a dot 
and then we put the value or variable that we are going to be pulling from that node and it was nc1. So now that we pulled that, now it's saying zero, zero and it, the, um, the, this control is always in the center of, of the control itself. So it's zero, zero, so it's over here. So now if we come into our background and we move this, now we can animate that, okay? So to have it full, just 0.5. So now we can start to build this animation because now we know how to get extract these values here. So we'll just come over to here and we're at the end here and we can make a keyframe here and then we can come to the other end, right? And if we just put negative, because remember we're at the center point, right? Center point, it's right here. We bring it over here, that's gonna be zero, but we need to get the other half of it off. So let's just go to zero so I can show you this. So it's right here, zero. We have to pull the other half of that off. So we would have to go to negative five. So we'll do uh, negative 0 0.5, which will take it off the screen. So now if we play this, now we have that bar that goes across. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. I think that's just the caching thing, yeah. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to, our next part of this is because we kind of have the animation now, we just need to add in a text node. And then this text node, we need to, let's just put a one here for now, pull this down and we'll connect these together. So now we can see them together. There we go. So now we need to uh, drive this text information from this information here. So we can do that same thing that we had. I'm just gonna go over here to, so I can copy it. And we're going to, so I just came into here, came up to modifiers and I just grabbed this and I just hit control C. Well then it's a back into our text one and we're gonna right click here, expression. And if I paste it here, now we'll have a value. But this value isn't very, <laughs> it's not like I had in that, um, it's not the same as what I had in the demo. Um, there's a lot of extra stuff in here. So now we need to work on modifying this information to work for our needs. So in here, we need to start to add some other calculations. So um, what we're gonna be adding here now to the end of this is the first thing that we wanna do is we want this to end in a one and a zero. So the easiest way to do that would be to just do plus 0 0.5. So now, at this end it's one, at this end it's zero. So we're, we're on the right track. But the next thing that we have to do is, well there's a couple of things. We have to make this one equal 100, and we need to get rid of all this fluff after here. So what we can do now is we can take these, and put them together. And then after that calculation, we are going to times this by 100. So now we have 100 here and we have zero here, but in the middle we have, we still have all these crazy decimal points. So now we have to get rid of the decimal point. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add in, in the front here, math.floor, and then this is just stating what we're gonna do with the decimals. And then we're also going to have to uh, add this in. And then we're gonna state that that is going to be, um, we're going to affect, we're gonna do plus 0 0.5. And that's just stating, you know, if it's greater than a five, move it up. If it's not, then move it down. And then once we do that, now we have whole numbers. So we go from zero all the way up to 100. Okay, one other thing while we're here is because this is 100, these numbers are going to shift a little bit, right? So when it goes to 100, it opens up a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're going to anchor this to this point to the left side. Because the other thing that we wanna do is add another text node in here 
and we're just gonna bring this over, combine these two together. And then in here, we're just going to put in a percent sign. What we can do is we can come back into our text one, come in here, and we grab this Y, so I just double click, highlighted it all, Control C, uh, text two, come back in here, Y, Control V. So now they're next to each other. Then in our text two node, we'll come back over here to the text stuff, we'll anchor it, and we'll put this on the left. So now we have 100, we have our percentages here. And now all we have to do is just uh, connect this into here. And then if we play this, now we have our bar that comes all the way across, right? So, so far we only added in two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end, okay? I said we were gonna add four. So we're going to add in our two other keyframes and that's going to be another text node. And in here, we're just going to put in whatever the whatever you want to put. So I'm going to put loading and three dots, okay? And then we're going to move this up a little bit. I don't know what I just did, but I'm going to move it up to there. And then we can just connect these all together. Play this, so now I have loading. Now, the other animation that I had, I'm gonna pull down a rectangle, was the three dots at the end um, coming on and going off. So to do that, I just have a rectangle, and this rectangle is coming into the text node, so this is just stating what's visible and what isn't visible. Very simple. Uh, we'll just bring this up and bring this over to here, so we just have loading come to the beginning, we'll keyframe, and then we'll come in, let's say uh, 15 keyframes. We'll keyframe again. We'll bring this over. So we're like that. So now we have this little animation that goes loading. So there's our other two keyframes, but like we had in the, in the demo, the loading just was on repeat. So to do that, instead of just making a ton of keyframes, we come into our spline editor. We have this rectangle highlighted. We'll click right in here and we'll come into the select tool and then we'll see where our keyframe is. Click this button so we can see all of our keyframes. We'll highlight the keyframes. We'll right click and then set loop. And then we're just going to click loop. So once it's done, it goes back to the first keyframe down here and it'll keep going. So boom, now we have that. So now we pretty much have everything built with just four keyframes. So the other thing that I had in here, I'm just gonna move this stuff down. Oh, come on. Other thing I had is I had a background node in here for the color. Then we'll just look at that quick. And I just came into gradient. You can, you know, obviously make this whatever you want, but. These were the two colors I had, and then I just put this 0 0.5, <clears throat> 0 0.5, 0. And then we can come into repeat. And we will lay everything on top of this. And there we go. And then the other thing that we could do is coming out of this background node, which is our loading bar, is we could put in a transform. And now we can just change the size of this a little bit. And the reason why we're changing the size of this uh, transform instead of doing it with these is because we want to have it start and end at, at, our, at our ends. And then we can just manipulate the size after we do that because if we didn't, and the, the animation would look a little weird because it just wouldn't start like 1%, you wouldn't actually see it. Because if we come in and we had 1%, 1% would start right in here and it would be like not until like 3% that we would actually start to see it. So that's kind of how we uh, build up a, a loading bar. And you know, we could keep going from here if we wanted to 
add in you know some type of gradient in this we could do that as well so we just simply go here to here so let's just make this 0.5 oh so something like that and then uh Whatever the colors are you want it, you know, it to be, you could make it. <laughs> That's kind of the, the easy way if you wanted to, to flare this up a little bit. Uh, you could just grab all this, move it up, put in another rectangle. We could go like this duplicate and let's connect this all up you can do something like that or you can turn this to subtract now we don't see it now we can just add in a little bit of a border here hello there we go. There we go. Now we have a little bit of a border. If that's the kind of thing that you want it. Um, but that's kind of uh, it for building, you know, this with just four keyframes. You could fancy it up as much as you want. You could change it to, I don't know. <laughs> There's a ton of different things you could do. I just, the, the main things that I just wanted to show you is how to make, um, different controllers how to pull that information how to then uh, manipulate that data to be something that is better um, that would work a lot better for the project and uh, yeah how to replicate the uh, the keyframes and keep those continuously going but that's kind of it for this one let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you have any other ideas or suggestions, leave them down there as well. Again, my name's Jay Arn. Thanks for watching. One last thing, if you guys um, don't know this, uh, at the end here, if you want this to go onto the timeline, all you have to do is the final node that has everything. You just have to take the output and uh, connect it up to the media out, and then it'll be on your timeline. Sorry about that. Thank you.